so today's topic of discussion is umbilical cord and anomalies in umbilical cord we'll be talking about the various content of umbilical cord what we'll be talking about we'll be talking about contents of umbilical cord and in anomalies we'll be talking about four types of anomalies now what are these four type of anomalies the four type of anomalies are what is one the meckels m e c k e l yes meckels fistula right another is uracus fistula another is we'll be talking about what we'll be talking about gastroschisis another thing is omphalocel right we'll be talking about these anomalies now before getting into that thing let us focus on this diagram now in this diagram if you look carefully here you will see what you will see is okay the thing that you will see right here is you will see here this is umbilical cord right what is this this is umbilical cord now here you can see there are two duct one is vitello duct and another is allantoic duct so one is vitello duct and one is allantoic duct now this vitello duct is also called what this is also called vitello intestinal duct what i said is vitello vitello intestinal duct right and this is the allantoic duct okay now let us uh, learn a bit about these things now okay i'll tell one fact and the fact is okay this vitello intestinal duct is a diverticulum of mid gut now what are these mid gut okay now in this diagram if you look carefully what you will see is this portion okay the portion that i am highlighting right here this portion this portion indicates what this portion indicates our foregut what this indicate is this indicates our foregut and behind this structure this structure which is structures these is stru behind these structures <coughs> these structures denote our what these denotes our mid gut what it denotes it denotes our mid gut right this denotes our mid gut and as you can see right here this vitello intestinal duct vitelline duct is what it is the diverticulum let me show it so clearly what was our mid gut this was our mid gut right and if you watch carefully this 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 the diverticulum of what mid gut right this is what this diverticulum of mid gut is our vitelline duct or vitello intestinal duct similarly let us move to our hind gut and here we're looking to our hind gut you can see this right this is our what hind gut and as you can see as you see hind gut there you will see what there you will see one diverticulum and this diverticulum is called what allantoic duct so we talked about two duct one is vitelline vitelline intestinal duct or vitelline duct and another is allantoic duct now what is valid uh, vitello intestinal duct or vitelline duct this is what diverticulum diverticulum of what mid gut mid gut what was right here it was mid gut right mid gut and what was here here it was what hind gut okay now vitello intestinal duct is a diverticulum of mid gut as you can see right here diverticulum of mid gut similarly what is allantoic duct allantoic duct is what diverticulum of what hind gut right diverticulum of hind gut so here what we are saying this is what this is our umbilical umbilical cord right and the two content of umbilical cord what are the two content of umbilical cord one is vitelline duct vitello intestinal duct and another is allantoic duct what is another structure the another structure is allantoic duct right allantoic duct diverticulum of hind gut and vitello uh, vitello intestinal duct diverticulum of mid gut now the thing that we need to know right here is okay right these two structures vitelline duct and allantoic duct they should be closed when baby burns right these are the structures present in fetus so they should be closed well, what will happen if these structure will not be closed and if these structure will not be closed what will happen is because of persistent vitello intestinal duct right <coughs> there will be what there will be the formation of meckel's diverticulum meckel's <coughs> diverticulum Verticulum, right? Meckel's diverticulum. Now, because of this Meckel's diverticulum, what will happen is the baby will have 
fecal material on umbilical right what will have is baby right baby will have fecal matter fecal matter in umbilical umbilical cord right that means here if the baby bonds with persistent Vitello intestinal duct that will give rise to Michael's diverticulum and what will happen in this Michael's diverticulum is in this umbilical region where in this umbilical region there will be what there will be fecal material right okay now what if, what if in the case of Allen Twig duct and why this happens we will discuss it in detail right when we will be discussing about Michael's diverticulum so for now just a brief info, uh, information so in Allen Twig duct what happens in Allen Twig duct is this Allen Twig duct also need to be what it need to be obliterated right it need to be removed but if it persists then what will happen is the baby will be having urine in its umbilical region or umbilical cord so that is the main thing right if vitello intestinal duct will be persistent then what will happen is in um, umbilical cord there will be what there will be the presence of fecal matter and if allentoic duct will be persistent then there will be the uh, presence of what there will be the presence of our urine in umbilical cord so now let us go into another diagram okay let me see if something is remaining right here so okay what i said okay let us revise this diagram this is forgot this is the mid gut, right? Mid gut diverticulum. What is this? Vitelline duct. And this is the hind gut, right? Hind gut co diverticulum is our what? Allentoic duct, right? Okay. Now, what is this structure? Umbilical cord. So, that's all. Now, let us move toward another diagram. What is this? The content of umbilical cord. Now, this diagram, I mean, this, this structure, we are just magnifying it right here and viewing it, right? And talking about the content of umbilical cord, what are these structures? Okay. You can see the outermost covering is amnion. Amnion is the outermost covering, right? And similarly, if you see right here you will see umbilical vein now this vein we are showing it in red color why we are showing in red color because vein is carrying what oxygenated blood right in the case of fetus when it is what uh, inside the womb right umbilical vein you can see umbilical vein is right here another thing the remaining remains of vitello intestinal duct as we have said that vitello intestinal duct what is it it is the what diverticulum of what diverticulum of mid gut so it needs to be removed from body right okay so here we have what remain remains of vitello intestinal duct similarly moving further we have what we have two arteries and these two arteries are what these two arteries are umbilical arteries and we are showing these arteries okay what we are showing what we what we have mentioned right here is there is what one vein and how many arteries two arteries why only one vein because initially there are two veins left vein and right vein the left vein is left that means it remains the left vein is left or it remains but the right vein regresses right regresses that means it will be obliterated so the left vein and large no, among left vein and right vein only what left vein is remaining so only one uh, only one vein is there umbilical vein is there but in the case of arteries there are two umbilical arteries both arteries persist okay now another thing is there will be the remnant of allen twist as we have said there will be the remnant of fetal intestinal duct similarly there will be the remnant of allen twist so <coughs> so okay mm, that's all now let us move toward another diagram and another diagram okay it is what it is the fetal condition right it is baby we are seeing right here this is what this is umbilical right umbilical cord umbilical cord so now what is going on is we are just watching this diagram right here just we are taking the schematic diagram of this structure right here now just we are flipping this diagram and we will observe what we'll observe this diagram now talking about this diagram okay let us be more precisely clear now talking about this diagram okay as you can see right <coughs> as you can see okay okay now this is structure what is this is structure what i what i'm showing right here this is what this is forgot what is this this region is forgot right this is forgot and you can see right here this is mid gut right you can see right here this is mid gut so what is this structure this is mid gut right this is our mid gut and you can see what is this this is what this is the what vitello intestinal duct that we were talking about what is this this is vitello intestinal duct right vitello intestinal duct what is this vitello intestinal duct it is what diverticulum of mid gut right diverticulum of mid gut now what it is doing is it is communicating 
it is providing the means of communication for what for our Midgard and our yolk sack what is this this is yolk sack this is yolk sack right yolk sack this is our yolk sack now okay this is our yolk sack now moving further what is this this structure is our hind gut and as we already discussed there is one what diverticulum now what is this diverticulum this diverticulum hind gut diverticulum this is our what this is our allantoic duct allantoic duct right allantoic duct now moving forward as i said <coughs> this is our what foregut right <coughs> this is our foregut this is our mid gut this is our hind gut right and all these four st three structures what these are these are gut tube these are gut tube okay <coughs> now here you can see i s i mentioned that this is structure is what this is structure is vitello intestinal duct but as you can see as you can see our this region the region of mid gut it is some somehow it is protruding inside our umbilical region right it is protruding inside our umbilical region now why it is protruding inside our umbilical region it is protruding because gut tube this gut tube it develops so earlier right it develops so earlier than um, uh, gut wall right it develops so earlier that there won't be space enough space to be enclosed right so it protrudes somewhat inwardly so what i'm saying is there is this is the region of what mid gut what it is doing is it is herniating inside umbilical cord now why it is herniating obviously it is a temporary herniation because gut tube gut tube right here this gut tube what will happen is this gut tube is growing faster right this gut tube is growing faster than what than our abdominal cavity so in our cavity there is no space so it is protruding inside or it is herniating inside our what umbilical cord so that is the reason now talking again um, okay this uh, this thing okay this this is what this is our this region or this is our what umbilical cord umbilical cord as we have said that there are we discussed two content of umbilical cord and the one content was what vital intestinal duct and another content was what allantoic duct as you can see this is our allantoic duct right this is our allantoic duct right this is our allantoic duct okay this is our allantoic duct and <clears throat> and if you just remember we talked in the content of umbilical cord we talked about what two arteries umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein so here okay so here i already mentioned what is this this is our yolk sac this is our yolk sac right okay now <coughs> now this yolk sac this yolk sac is the reason why uh, there is the formation of what this our gut tube or we can say yolk sac yolk sac incorporate to form gut tube right yolk sac incorporate to form gut tube and gut tube differ differentiate into foregut mid gut and hind gut right foregut mid gut and hind gut so here we were talking about allantoic duct and talking about this allantoic duct it is surrounded by two umbilical arteries so we'll showing about umbilical arteries what we can do is umbilical arteries it is surrounded by two umbilical arteries as you can see right here i'm drawing two umbilical arteries right two umbilical arteries <coughs> and one vein and that one vein is what is the one vein the one vein is left umbilical vein left umbilical vein so here allantoic is one vein and what are the two arteries right two arteries okay <coughs> why one vein because left one is left or it remains but right one regresses right and two umbilical arteries because two both of them remains right both of them remains so this was <coughs> all about our what this was all about our this diagram so i think it's clear now right okay <coughs> now moving forward what we have is we have this diagram now what is this diagram okay talking about this diagram what we have is this is meckel's diverticulum what is this this is meckel's diverticulum and what is it what are you trying to show Meckel's diverticulum it is trying to show it is the condition in which there will not be obliteration of vitello intestinal duct if vitello intestinal duct uh, remains then there will be the formation of what Meckel's diverticulum so Meckel's diverticulum it is okay talking about 
Michels diverticulum. The first point that I said is, what is Michels diverticulum? Michels diverticulum, okay, let me write it right here. This is the diagram of Michels diverticulum, talking about Michels diverticulum. It is the remnant of what? Remnant of vitellointestinal duct, right? Remains of, okay. Now, this, uh, do, uh, what this, our Michels diverticulum, this Michels diverticulum is toward anterior abdomen wall. Okay, we'll go that thing a bit later on. So, right now, what I'm trying to say is this uh, Michels diverticulum through this diagram, through this diagram, what I'm doing, trying to show is since it contains all layers, right? It contains all layers. So, it contains all layers. So, it is known as true diverticulum. What it is called? It is called true diverticulum, right? True diverticulum. Why it is called true diverticulum? Because it consists of all the layers. Now, talking in detail about this Michaels diverticulum, okay, we need to go toward this this diagram, okay. The same story, similar story, what is this? This is our foregut, right, foregut. What is this? This is our midgut, right, this is our midgut, right, midgut. Okay, and what is this? This is our hindgut, right, all these are the part of foregut, all these are the part of what? Gut tube, right, gut tube. And what is contributing in formation of gut tube? Our what? Gut sac, right, okay. Now, as you discussed earlier, now what is this? This is the midgut loop, which was horniating inside what? This this structure was horniating into umbilical cord, right? Why it was horniating? Because gut tube, uh, gut tube, they develop or they grow earlier than what? Than our abdominal walls. So it was horniating inside umbilical cord, and this is the temporary horniation, right? Uh, not permanent one. So later on it will be it will just go back again. Okay. Now here you can see what is this? This this duct. What is this duct? This duct is called vitellointestinal duct. Okay, what vitellointestinal duct is doing? It is communicating what? Yolk sac to what? Our mid gut. What is this? This is our yolk sac. Vitellointestinal duct is what it is doing. It is just providing the means of communication from uh, to yolk sac to our what mid gut. Okay. Now if you see what is this? If you see, this is our anterior abdominal wall. This is our anterior abdominal wall. And in the anterior abdominal wall, we have what? Umbilicus, right? Umbilicus, center portion, umbilicus. So, just if you see, just um, back of our umbilicus or anterior abdominal wall, what we have is, we have Michel's diverticulum, right? Michel's diverticulum. The protruding, this intestinal duct, it did not uh, regress right so it it remained and the remaining structure now is called Michel's diverticulum since this is what <coughs> this is Michel's diverticulum this area what it would be it would be what it would be our uh, mid gut right we know this is our what this is our mid gut so <coughs> mid gut and behind behind this our gut tube right since this is ileum this is Michel's diverticulum right this all structure it is what our it is gut tube and behind the gut tube, what we have is we have mesentery. Now, what is this mesentery? It is mesentery. We will talk in detail in uh, development of mesentery. Simply, right now, the thing that we need to keep in our mind is mesentery is a structure or it is a double fold of peritoneum that connects gut tube. Okay, this is our gut tube, right? This is our gut tube and this is our abdominal wall. Abdominal wall. Now, what this mesentery is doing is this will provide this communication. This is mesentery. What mesentery is doing is it is communicating uh, or it is providing the way of connection between our this abdominal wall, this abdominal wall and this gut, right, this gut. So, mesentery is a double fold of peritoneum that connects abdominal wall with gut or with viscera, gut is also called viscera. So, right here the thing that we need to know is, okay, this mesentery, where this mesentery is, this mesentery, this mesentery is in posterior wall. Right, this mesentery is lying toward posterior wall, and our anterior wall it is forward. Right, this is forward. So, <coughs> Michel's diverticulum, Michel's diverticulum, as you can see, Michel's diverticulum, where it is facing, it is facing toward anterior wall, where it is facing toward anterior wall. Now, <coughs> since it is facing toward anterior wall, anterior wall, which is opposite of what posterior wall, and in posterior wall, what we have, we have mesentery. So, this line. This dotted line you can see right here. This dotted line, what this dotted line is called? It is called anti mesentery border. Why anti mesentery border? Because it is present in what anterior abdominal wall and mesentery is present in posterior wall. So, we can say it is anti mesentric wall. 
similar simple right it is what or we can say it is anti mesentric border what is this what is this this is our anti mesentric border so what we can see right here is okay <coughs> what we can see right here is our this uh, Meckel's diverticulum what our this Meckel's diverticulum it is present toward anterior wall right it is present toward our anterior wall now now this we can say Meckel's diverticulum is present toward anti it is present in anti mesentry border right so we understood about this anti mesentric border right in order to know about this specific point that Meckel's diverticulum is also it, it can be said that it is also present in anti mesentric border that's all so okay okay now again i would like to recall uh, in order the first point is our this Meckel's diverticulum what is this this is the remnant of vitello intestinal duct simple the first point now this Meckel's diverticulum where it is present it is present in anterior abdominal wall right it is present in anterior close to anterior abdominal wall or this can be also said that it is present in anti mesentric border that's all and mesentery what i say what we said is mesentery is present in posterior wall right okay now another thing is now here you can see this is what this is our midgut the portion of midgut this is meckel's diverticulum now what is going on is uh, what is going uh, going on is this midgut diverticulum right this midgut diverticulum it is attaching to terminal ilium right terminal ilium and we know we know that we talked that earlier in the lecture we said we talked about that midgut in meckel's diverticulum what was happening what was happening is in umbilical cord there was coming the feces right there was coming the feces um, feces was coming in umbilical cord of child so why the feces was coming because this midgut diverticulum or the midgut is communicating with what ilium the terminal portion of ilium okay this was about what <coughs> this was about our meckel's diverticulum okay there is an interesting fact about meckel's diverticulum and talking about the interesting fact the interesting fact is okay okay there is the rule of two rule of two now what is the rule of two this meckel's diverticulum meckel's diverticulum is two inch long right its length is two inch okay now another important thing is okay there is one point and it is the ilio sickal junction right ilio sickal junction ilium and sickum there is a junction called ilio sickum junction and this meckel's diverticulum it lies two feet away two feet away from what ilio sickal junction ilio sickal junction and another two is it is present in two percent of populations it is present in two percent of population so the rule of two i mean two inch long two feet away from ilio sickal junction and it is present in two percent of population so this was about what and another important thing that we already mentioned is this Meckel's diverticulum is called true diverticulum why it is called true diverticulum because it consists of all all four layers right it consists of all four layers now talking moving forward okay let us uh, view the diagram okay the diagram in which there are the representation that we talked uh, just right now okay now okay let, let us begin from this structure what is this this is our gut tube right this is our gut tube gut tube is divided into the upper one four gut and the middle one mid gut and the last one hind gut right four gut mid gut and hind gut and we already discussed the diverticulum of mid gut what was the diverticulum of mid gut the diverticulum of mid gut was our uh, sorry the diverticulum of mid gut yeah it is right the diverticulum of mid gut is vitello intestinal duct right what is this the diverticulum uh, what is this the vitello intestinal duct it is what the diverticulum of mid gut simple right and if this uh, vitello intestinal duct it will not be closed if it don't regress then what will happen there will be anomalies and that anomalies is called what meckel's anomalies simple right meckel's anomalies okay and another thing in hindgut as you uh, just see in hindgut the thing you can see right here is in hindgut we will be discussing okay the the first point that we study is, is hindgut diverticulum okay this is the hindgut and the diverticulum as you can see what is this diverticulum called this diverticulum is called this diverticulum is called allen 2 is right allen 2 is duct 
Now, these ln 2 end duct, ln 2 edge duct, these are our what? These are our um, uh, radial intestinal duct, all these are opening in what? These are opening in umbilical opening. Simple, right? Okay. One important thing that we need to keep in mind here is, okay, this hingot contain colica. What this contains, okay, we haven't mentioned this earlier. This hingot, what it contains is, it contains cloaca. Okay. Now, what this colica contains is septum, right? This contains septum. Now, what this septum what is this septum called? This septum is called our urorectal septum at colica. Urorectal septum at colica, right? Okay. Now, okay. What is this? This is our hind gut, right? This is our hind gut. This is our hind gut. Now, what is going on in this hind gut is there is one septum as you can see right here. This is our septum, and this septum is called what? I'm sorry this hingot consists of colica and in that colica what we have is we have septum and this septum is called urorectal septum urorectal septum why it is called urorectal septum because obviously it might be dividing um, our hingot into two structures and what are the two structures right here two structures right here is u g s okay now two structures present right here two structures um, uh, that are divided by the septum is urogenital system okay one is put our ugs which further give rise to urinary bladder and another is rectum so uro so the name uro rectal septum one give rise to uh, it separates rectum and what this is structure which further forms urinary bladder right <coughs> urinary bladder Okay, so what happens is this urinary bladder as you have uh, this urinary bladder what happens is the tip of urinary bladder the opening at the tip of urinary bladder contains what it contains our allantoic duct it contains what allantoic duct right this urinary bladder the tip of urinary bladder contains allantoic duct and this allantoic duct what it does is this communicate this uh, opens in umbilical opening so what we said is if this ln2 is right if this ln2 is will not regress or it will remain then there will be the condition called uracus fistula and in that uracus fistula what we said is there will be the presence of urine what we said is urine in in what umbilical opening we discussed earlier right we discussed right here at the beginning what we discussed is right Mm, ln2 is if there one there if this ln2 duct won't be closed then there will be the opening and that opening will give rise to what it will give rise to urine in our umbilical region so so that's that was about that thing okay now <coughs> now what i said is okay ln2 is we're talking about ln2 is now in this ln2 is we're talking about this ln2 is in future this ln2 is now uh, will give rise to uracus what will give rise to it will give rise to uracus right uracus okay <coughs> adult in adult it will be obliterated and that obliterated structure will form uracus right uracus okay now what will happen if if this uracus or if this allantry duct will not be um, closed and will be patent or it will be opened right then what will happen is this uh, uracus it will drain uh, urine urine from urinary bladder right urine from urinary bladder why because this ln2 is docked it was what it was doing it was communicating between what the tip of urinary bladder to umbilical opening so this was and this this condition is known as ln2 is fistula right ln2 is fistula so we talked about two anomalies what are the two anomalies one is the Meckel's uh, anomalies and another is ln2 is fistula or uh, ln2 is anomalies so okay now <coughs> Now, the thing that uh, we are do going to do is we will be looking toward this question, which is not associated with vitello intestinal duct. Okay. The word vitello intestinal duct should make us think about what? It should make us think about that it is the diverticulum of midgut, the first point, right? And talking about um, its anomalies, if this will, will not be closed, then there will be Meckel's diverticulum or Meckel's anomalies that includes Meckel's fistula also, right? So, the first thing is okay. Okay, uh, here you can see diverticulum, ileal diverticulum, right? Another thing you can see is, another point, you, one is the ileal, uh, ileal diverticulum, another point is umbilical fistula, and another thing is enterocystoma, and another is mesenteric cyst. So, answer is already ticked, it is mesenteric cyst. But the thing is, why 
not these two right why not these two these two ileal diverticulum and umbilical fistula these two contains what these two contains all layers all layers all layers all four layers and we have discussed that all four layers are the characteristics of Meckel's diverticulum sorry all four layers are the features of Meckel's diverticulum so it is also known as a true diverticulum and Meckel's diverticulum is a result of vital intestinal duct patency so these two are associated with our vital intestinal duct so this cannot be answered and enterocystoma it is also associated with vitello intestinal duct but mesenteric cyst mesenteric cyst does not contain the layer of don't contain layer of gut tube so what is this so this mesenteric cyst is not associated with our vital intestinal duct so this is the answer now another question regarding Meckel's diverticulum all are true except anti mesenteric border yeah that's true because anti mesenteric border we said that it is present in anterior abdominal wall close to anterior abdominal wall since the mesentery it is present in what posterior abdominal wall so we can say that border as anti mesenteric border now it is vitello intestinal duct remnant obviously it is the true right we talked about what vitello intestinal and vitello intestinal duct when it remains it will form what Michael's diverticulum that's cool so another thing that we say um, okay three inch long right we said that it is what two inch long right the rule of two two inch long two feet away from iliosacral junction another is it is present in two percent of population so it is written three inch long so the fact is that it ranges from two to two to three inch long okay it ranges from two to three inch long but it can be also answered okay it can uh, it cannot be also answered because it can it is also a right statement so let us move toward another thing pain in umbilicus obviously mucous diverticulum the, mm, the sign is there will be the pain in umbilicus so all the points are correct and here we need to find the less correct one and the less correct one is three inch long because it is more accepted that it is two inch long so okay now this were the questions okay now let us move toward uracle fistula or uracle cyst now what is this uracle if you remember what i said earlier is allen 2 is allen 2 is later obliterate and it forms uracus right and if this uracus um, or if this uh, allen 2 is it persists it will be patent then there will be the condition that this allen to um, there will be the condition that there will be uracus fistula that will result uh, urine in umbilical cord that's all right now what is this uracal fistula similarly as i already said as i already said uracal fistula there will be urine in umbilical cord now why there will be urine in umbilical cord because okay uh, let us go through through this diagram as you can see what is this this is urinary bladder right this is urinary bladder and what is going on here is this is the head of this is the tip or head of urinary bladder and what is going on is this head this uh, urinary head of urinary bladder <coughs> right or apex of urinary bladder is um, attached by what it is at attached by our what uh, allen twist duct right allen twist duct right allen twist duct allen twist duct right this is our allen twist duct and this allen twist duct if it is patient then patent then what will happen is there will be opening right since there will be opening what will happen is and it will go where it will go in umbilical opening now since it is patent right in uracal fistula the urine will come from here and it will go to umbilical opening umbilical opening sorry umbilical opening now what is going on here is okay <coughs> this urinary bladder right it is um, uh, uracus what is uracus doing is uracus is attaching to the apex of urinary bladder right um, and this is uh, providing uh, the pathway to open into umbilical cord now similarly in umbilical you can see this is what this is the umbilical region right umbilical region this uracus is attaching umbilical region it anterior abdominal wall that's simple now this is what the fistula is i mean the fistula simply means <coughs> opening right and the persisting lumen, uh, lumen of uracus persisting lumen of uracus or allen twig duct right bringing urine from urinary bladder to umbilical cord region that's all now what about the cyst now uracal cyst simply there is cyst right there is cyst now what is going is what is this cyst it is the pinching um, what is going on is it is the pin, pinched off structure right pinched off structure right here now what is going on is 
Okay, this uh, cyst it is having a fibrous attachment, right? It is having fibrous attachment. You can see the fibrous attachment, right? Uh, it is attaching. It is having fibrous attachment to what anterior abdominal wall, right? And another is it is having fibrous attachment uh, to what apex of urinary bladder, right? Apex of urinary bladder. You can see, right? So there is now obstruction. The obstruction is going on, and this cyst is uh, providing what obstruction in urine passes. So that's all about what urethral fistula and urethral cyst. Okay. Moving about its uh, detail, okay. <coughs> urethral cyst and urethral. Mm. Okay, now the thing that we will be talking about is we'll be talking. Okay, uh, right now what we did is till now what we did is we talked about Meckel's diverticulum or Meckel's anomalies and we talked about what mm, urethral fistula, right? Urethral fistula. At the beginning of uh, chapter, what we said is we'll be talking about four anomalies, right? Four anomalies. What were the four anomalies? Meckel's diverticulum, urethral fistula, urethral, right? And other was what? Uh, gastros, chysis, gastros, chysis, right? Another was what? Omphacillus, omphacil, right? Omphacil. Okay, now there are two remaining. Okay. Okay. <coughs> the first thing is, this is structure. As you can see, this is the intestine, right? It is protruding, uh, uh, protruding, right? Protruding out into a uh, right umbilical region. So. The first question is identify the clinical condition. Now, what is this clinical condition? This clinical condition is simply gastroschisis, right? Now, we will be talking about gastroschisis. Now, talking about gastroschisis, <coughs> I would like to take you toward one diagram, and the diagram is okay. Okay. Now, what is this? This is our gastroschisis. This is our gastroschisis. Now, let me draw one structure and the structure is okay let me draw the content of umbilical and we're talking about the content of umbilical what we are having is we were having what is this we are having umbilical vein right one umbilical vein we are having what we are having two umbilical arteries we are having okay two umbilical arteries as you can see one umbilical vein this is our umbilical vein this these are our umbilical arteries right <coughs> umbilical arteries and umbilical vein okay now what is going on is <coughs> what is going on here is this <coughs> this umbilical arteries right this umbilical arteries okay let me draw umbilical vein down to it now these are umbilical vein okay what we said earlier is umbilical in umbilical artery right there will be present of what uh, both umbilical arteries that means both of the umbilical arteries will remain but in the case of umbilical vein what we have said is um, in um, in the case of umbilical vein only the okay this is what this is our <coughs> left umbilical vein umbilical vein right and this is our right umbilical vein what we said is the left one will be left right it will be left right and this will be left but what we said is this right one it will be regressing right right one will be regressing since this right one will be regressing what will happen is this right one will have uh, the weak uh, weak wall in it right this uh, right one will have weak wall since it is obliterating or it is uh, being removed what will happen is there will be the weak spot in the area of this right umbilical vein so since there is weak structure in this right umbilical vein what will happen is the intestinal um, content right the intestinal content right the intestinal content will be protruding out through this what through this right umbilical vein region which is the weakest spot and this condition this condition is called gastroschisis what this is called this is called gastroschisis as we discussed right here gastroschisis g a s t r o s c h i Yes, I yes. Simply, what is gastroschisis? Some intestine, right? Some part of intestine come out of weak spot, right? Some part of intestine will come out of weak spot, right? Because of what? Because of regression of what? Right umbilical vein, umbilical vein, and that condition is called what? That umbil condition is called our gastroschisis. Okay, okay. Now, what will happen here is, in the case of gastroschisis, as you can see, this is our umbilical, right? It is our umbilical. Right. Since it is coming out from uh, right, <coughs> right umbilical vein, this uh, our umbilical will not be 
I mean it will not be affected right it will not be affected and uh, this our this intestine will not be covered by will not be covered by our what amnion which is the outer covering of our what um, our umbilical right umbilical cord so here what we can say is gastroschisis is intestinal herniation intestinal herniation from weak spot right from weak spot where umbilical vein regresses from where umbilical vein regresses which umbilical vein usually right umbilical vein <coughs> right now what is going on is this structure will come out of amnion now since it this comes out of um, amnion uh, this will not be lined by amnion right this will not be lined by amnion right now here the uh, umbilical cord will be normal so these are the point on gastroschisis now <coughs> okay let us move toward this diagram right now what this diagram is talking about now talking about this diagram let us see again <coughs> okay okay now talking about the, about this diagram what is going on here is as you can see right here this is what this is our what this is our umbilical opening right this is our what umbilical opening and this umbilical opening this is what this is our umbilical opening now what this uh, and this is the structure after birth so the artery will be red and the vein will be what the vein will be our blue right this is umbilical artery now what this umbilical artery are uh, what are the number of umbilical artery as we have already mentioned there are two umbilical arteries this is one umbilical artery and this is another umbilical artery right and since there is one and there is only one vein umbilical vein and this is our umbilical vein right okay now why we are talking about these things umbilical artery and umbilical vein so <coughs> talking about umbilical vein we said that left one will be left left one left right one will be regressing right okay right one will be regressing okay now what this left one will do is as you can see right here this left umbilical vein what this will do is this left one will go to liver what this will do is it will go to liver right it will go to liver now this left one what i said is this left one will go to go to liver right this will go to liver now what will happen right <coughs> now this left one will go to liver and this um, umbilical left umbilical vein is covered by our double fold of peritoneum right it is covered by double fold of peritoneum okay it is going to be um, it is covered by double fold of peritoneum now what will happen is since it goes to liver what will it, it will form is it will form what it will form this left umbilical vein will form um, ligamentum teres of liver it will form ligamentum teres of liver and what about that double fold of peritoneum that double fold of peritoneum which is covering left umbilical vein what will what will happen is it will form the ligament one of the ligament of liver and that ligament is what is that ligament that is falciform ligament what it will form is it will form fal falciform ligament as you can see right here what is this this is structure this is falciform ligament okay right this is falciform ligament okay now let us talk about what let us talk about the umbilical artery now talking about umbilical artery okay in vain what we said in weight what the right one regresses the left one is left and the left one it goes to liver and it is covered by double fold of peritoneum the left umbilical vein it will form ligamentum teres of liver but the double fold of peritoneum that was covering the left umbilical vein will form what it will form our falciform ligament and it is the one of the ligament of um, liver and we will be talking that in detail right okay now let us talk about umbilical artery now talking about umbilical artery right <coughs> okay okay now talking about umbilical artery there are two in number two in number as you can see right here these are umbilical arteries right umbilical arteries now as we as we just focus on these umbilical artery what we will see is the proximal part of umbilical artery these these regions these region the proximal region of uh, proximal part of umbilical artery what is going on here is okay from proximal part of umbilical artery will still be persisting in adult right why this will be uh, still be persisting in adult because in order to supply urinary bladder what they will do is they will supply urinary bladder right and these these posterior part of umbilical artery which are persisting in uh, adult 
what these are later called these are called what these are called superior vesicle arteries right you can see right here superior vesicle arteries what are these superior vesicle arteries superior vesicle arteries are the arteries that supplies blood uh, urinary bladder right urinary bladder and simply in, in in the condition of fetus what are these these are the proximal part of uh, umbilical artery that's all right okay now what are the further thing that we need to know here is as you know right okay let us talk as you know this urinary bladder what we said is this urinary bladder are the apex of urinary bladder are uh, um, are connected by what these are connected by uracus we said uracus or the umbil or the allantois we said right uh, allantois in future that will they will form uracus these uracus they connect to the apex of urinary bladder you can see the structure right here right also with different color okay this is what okay this is what this is our uracus you can see right here we have said that uh, uracus we have said that allantois allantois duct it is also the content of what umbilical cord we said right okay now further further moving we have said that okay you can see right here ileum with meckel's diverticulum what is this meckel's diverticulum meckel's diverticulum what is meckel's diverticulum persistent uh, vitello intestinal duct right uh, what is this this is the diverticulum what is this vitello intestinal uh, diverticulum sorry what is this vitello intestinal duct the, it is the diverticulum of midgut right you can see this is the area of midgut and here is the here is what here is the diverticulum and this is what meckel's this is what this is what this is our vitello intestinal duct and if it persists then it will be what meckel's diverticulum and you can see right here ileum right ileum is having meckel's diverticulum okay that's all so here what we can say is since here we have meckel's diverticulum we have what we have uh, duracus or allantois this both here it is showing the abnormal condition right okay <coughs> what we discussed here okay anything remaining here is okay the thing mm. okay what we discussed here is okay the thing that we discussed i'll just repeat in fast this is what this is the opening of umbilical cord right and this is whole structure is umbilical cord right and in umbilical cord we talked about what two arteries these arteries and these arteries in arteries uh, talking about arteries the uh, the proximal part of arteries what is going on is these remain right these remain and they supply uh, urinary bladder and they supply urinary bladder and the name of these proximal part of uh, umbilical arteries it changes and it becomes superior vesicle arteries that's all now talking about another thing and the another thing is these are the veins right these are the veins we said that the right one regresses left one is left and the left one what will going what is going on here is the left one reaches liver and they will form ligamentum teres of liver and the double fold of peritoneum that was covering the left um, left vein now what are these double fold of peritoneum forming these are forming what falciform ligament and which is the one of the ligament of liver similarly we talked about what allen twice right we talked about uracus we talked about michael's diverticulum that's all so now one question median umbilical ligament is uh, derived from median umbilical ligament is derived from since we haven't talked about median umbilical ligament so now through this question we will like to move toward the concept so from that uh, from that question we came into this diagram here in this diagram if you will see you will see medial umbilical cord and you will see another median umbilical fold okay medial umbilical fold and median umbilical fold talking about medial umbilical fold and median umbilical fold now what are these structures talking about medial right medial now when distal part of umbilicus right what is this this is our umbilical cord right this is this whole structure is our umbilical cord when the distal part of umbilicus right becomes medial umbilical ligament right when this distal part for your kind of information the distal part of umbilicals will form medial umbilical ligament distal part of umbilical will form medial umbilical ligament now these when this um, mid, when this distal part of umbilicals become medial umbilical ligament at that time what will happen is they are covered by some peritoneum now this peritoneum will form a fold right they will form a fold and what that fold is called this is called medial umbilical fold what i said is the distal part of umbilical cord distal part right this is the proximal this is the distal part the distal part of umbilical cord the distal part of umbilical fold will form median umbilical uh, this will form what this will form medial umbilical ligament medial umbilical ligament and they are covered by what double fold of peritoneum and the double fold of peritoneum now that will be called what median medial umbilical 
what fold now similarly talking about this median umbilical median right there we talk about medial here we are talking about median now talking about this median umbilical fold what is going on here is okay this you can see it is it is structure right here right here what we have said is this allantois and uracus right initially allantois later on uracus now this uracus right this uracus contains a double fold of peritoneum right uracus give rise to what median right an median umbilical ligament this uracus give rise to median umbilical ligament and these ligament are covered by double fold of peritoneum and these fold are now called median umbilical fold so now getting into this point median umbilical ligament median right is derived from right is derived from what we said is median right talking about an not al talking about an we said that's median umbilical ligament is derived from what duracus and it contains a double fold of peritoneum and that is called what M uh, median umbilical fold so right here you can say it is simply the median umbilical ligament is derived from what proximal part of umbilical artery no distal part of umbilical artery no duracus obviously duracus we just discussed right we just discussed right there so okay we just discussed right here okay now distal part of umbilical artery now what distal part of umbilical artery was um, um, developing the distal part of umbilical artery was developing what it was developing it was developing into what it was developing into medial umbilical ligament right we discussed it medial 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 umbilical okay ligament right what i said is median is developed from duracus right but the medial is developed from distal part of umbilical artery as we have said right here medial it is developed from distal part of umbilical artery or umbilical structure we can say same thing okay now <coughs> this was all about what our two uh, ligament and their covering now moving forward what we have is we have this structure now what is this structure this is okay we talked about what we talked about three anomalies what are the three anomalies meckels we talked about uracus we talked about what we talked about gastro uh, ga um, gastros uh, gastrosis right and another now omphalocele right gastrochysis we talked about gastrochysis now remaining is omphalocele now talking about omphalocele this is the diagram of omphalocele Um, P H P H A L O C E L E. Now talking about omphalocil, right? Omphalocil is a, physio a physiological hernia. And uh, if you remember previously, what we said is uh, midgut. There in midgut there was what there was midgut loop, right? What this midgut tube um, loop was doing? It was horniating, right? It was horniating because the gut tube was not uh, developing. Sorry, the gut tube was developing so fast than the abdominal wall so it was protruding outward and this was called what this we said that later on it will go back so this is what uh, this is what if it don't go back right if it don't go back then there will be the anomalies and that is what omphalocele now what will happen here is well, the first point is it is what physiological hernia the first point is it is physiological hernia and another thing is what will happen is if that will not go back then what will happen is the intestine right it will uh, protrude Right, it will protrude, and that intestine will be covered by amnion. Right, the intestine will be covered by, covered by, amnion. If you compare with um, ga um, uh, gastrosis, right? If you compare by ga gastrochysis, gastrochysis, then at that time, in that in, in gastrochysis, there was in that the intestine was not covered by what amnion, right? There was no effect in umbilical cord. So what is going on here is. Okay, this is physiological hernia, but what happens if it will um, undergo pathological or if um, this this will not go back, if it will not go back into uh, midgut, what will happen is the condition will be pathological hernia, right? Pathological, pathological. What will happen in pathological hernia is, okay, <coughs> it did not go back, it did not go back, right? If it did not go back, then what will happen is, at that condition, okay, you can see right here, right? This is the abdominal wall, right? And here, what is going on is this is our what this is our amnion covering, and it is protruding out, right? The gut is protruding out, right? The gut is protruding out. Now here, it is covered by amnion, right? You can see umbilical cord. Umbelical cord also con is content con consisting of intestinal loops, right? Okay. Now, now in this condition, a severe condition, what will happen is you can see this is what this is what this is umbilical, right? Here you can see there are ab abdominal loops. Right, and you can see this is also what this is amnion. Now, what is going on is in severe condition, it will pull liver, right? It will pull liver within itself. So, 
talking about difference between omphalocele uh, gastrochysis and omphalocele gastrochysis and omphalocele talking about the difference the thing is first thing is gastrochysis what is going on gastrochysis was happening in right side right because of weak point in right side right okay now omphalocele it occurs in midline midline okay in this gastrochysis we said that umbilical cord is normal umbilical cord normal right in the case of omphalocele what is going on is umbilical cord umbilical cord contains what intestinal loops intestinal loops right intestinal loops and also liver in severe condition okay now here the intestinal intestine intestine is lined by or not lined by uh, amnion it is not lined by amnion lined by amnion and in the case of which uh, getting omphalocele it is lined by what it is lined by amnion okay now so <coughs> so this was what this was all about omphalocele and gastroschisis so in this uh, in this uh, discussion we discussed about what we discussed about different anum, uh, different um, different content of umbilical cord and amylase so in the later chapter or in the later discussion uh, we will be talking about what we will be talking about development of mesentery so till then bye bye